Guys, it's episode two of Crosstalk, and we still don't have an intro song from you. You've let us down, Crosstalkers. Crosstalk! We put out the call to have you come on board and give us an intro and an outro and nothing. Budget King is going to have to subject you to his weird crosstalk jingle until then. We're here talking crosstalk. Does one of you want to kind of explain the situation we're in on this comic book Wednesday? I I should timestamp this December 16th after having visited our local comic shops. I think it is so cool that we are here doing a crosstalk episode again so soon after we did another crosstalk episode. I did not expect to be here. And it is because Image Comic Books is doing some insane shit. Yeah, so earlier, if you didn't know, Robert Kirkman put out this kind of cryptic video saying that he found an old comic book that him and Ryan Otley had made back in the early 2000s. And that book was Solid Blood number 17. Now you're wondering, well, I have never heard of Solid Blood 1 through 16. Well, it's because they don't exist. What we're getting here is we believe to be kind of a crossover to crossover. It is a book that exists in an alternate reality, which I think will tie into the crossover series in later issues. And let's do some setup on this book a little bit. One, we found out today that it just got sent to comic book shops on a random amount. Blind, yeah. So this wasn't necessarily something they could order. Right. So the spec on this book was really high, and I went to some of my spec sites and saw it, and I glazed over it because I was like, oh, some book that's a 17 of a series I don't read, don't care. So that's that's one thing. Like, it's it's very subtly done. This is definitely guerrilla marketing in the best way. One of the best guerrilla marketing yeah, things ever, I've, I've ever seen. Ever. Ever seen in my entire life. The other thing about this book is it is done in this the sentiment. I mean, exact replica of a 90s comic, image comic book specifically. It looks like Savage Dragon, Youngblood, Wildcats, the same font, the same type of, like, lettering. It's done on newspaper. And even the characters are drawn in the same way of like super muscular, badass, sci-fi, weird looking heroes. Lots of chrome. So can I say that our comic book shop had this bagged and boarded, sold it like it was a variant special because obviously people are selling them for 40, 50 bucks on eBay early in the morning based off the hype. I don't know if they've gone down by the time we've released the show. But when I first pulled this out of its bag and board, the smell of newsprint just hit my nose immediately. And I was like, wow, cool. Like a brand new comic that gave me that weird nostalgia kick. It was like a time machine. It took you back. So the other thing is like, if you just read this comic book, there's actually nothing specifically in it that tells you it's a crossover book. There is no direct reference to it. Even in the hype video, they don't directly reference crossover. So In theory, and I don't think we're wrong, this could be not part of Crossover. I think there's no way it's not part of Crossover, but I'll just say that. Either this is a part of Crossover, or we're all rubes, and this is a thing that Robert Kirkman is doing separately to lead into another project that he's doing. There's no way. (laughs) Definitely part of Crossover. It has to be part of Crossover. Although when when we went into the shop today, too... The owner was like, yeah, what's crazy is like it ties into Walking Dead and it ties into Crossover. And I was like, I I don't think it ties into Walking Dead. I think it references Walking Dead in the lure of Robert Kirkman referencing himself. So you comic book shop guide, the comic book shop guy. <laughs> you were like, well, technically, it's not exactly <laughs> the Walking Dead universe. Yes, there's a character named Michonne. Yes, she is battling zombies. Is that directly Walking Dead universe here? I think not. What's funny is we both had not read the comic book. We had just read online people speculation. Telling, yeah, you were or, having a spec off. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's like we, uh, yeah, our bo- our our dicks both measured very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> but it was was it not cool to see Michonne being killed by zombies? Insane, so cool. That was really rad. And I guess because. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but in the in the letters page, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead too much. The letters page is amazing. I think you figure out so much about what's going on here. Yes. By reading the letters page. Right, yes. It's self-referential to events that haven't even happened in our quote-unquote universe. The letters page is the compass rose for why this book even exists. 
That's the only reason you get it. Yes, it's because of the letters. If the letters page wasn't there, this book would make no fucking sense <laughs> at all. And so in it, Robert Kirkman references a whole a, a couple of things that are like alternative history in the world of this where this comic book exists. Mm-hmm. One of which is that Walking Dead is not successful. Right. That didn't last long enough to even introduce Michonne, which is why he used that character in this book. Yes. He had to put Michonne in originally a comic book he was calling Dead Planet, I guess, or something like that. Which would have been Walking Dead. Okay. We're we're left to infer that Dead Planet was like an earlier alternate title for Walking Dead. Gotcha. Okay. And then he puts Michonne in here, and then there's like this whole thing about... Well, then he gets into the lore of his own comic book of swordsmen dying and, and all of this stuff um, happening. So in, in this comic book, Robert Kirkman is not necessarily a successful author. <laughs> no, 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 he's no. He's freaking that he's going to make it to 25 issues. This is issue 17, and he's like, wow, I can't believe I'm going to hit 25 in like another six months. Okay, so then, so there's that, right? Yep. Then they reference the... Mandela effect, but they call it the Castro effect, which is in the... reference to Fidel Castro and people thinking that he was still ruling Cuba in the 90s when he actually had died in the late 70s or like 80s in this storyline earlier, something like that around the Bay of Pigs situation. Yeah, so in whatever universe this is written in, Fidel Castro died a lot earlier. Gotcha. And so, yeah, there's that reference, which is the Berenstein Bears or Ber- Berenstein or however. Yeah, Berenstein. Berenstein. Yep. E instead of an A, A instead of an E. Yeah. Um, the Shazam movie and the Kazam movie. There we go. Yes. So it's essentially like incepting you, saying like this comic book always existed, mm-hmm. whether or not you know it. And then there's a reference to like the next issue will be in 2021. Did you Did you catch that? Yeah, and then there's all this like fake stuff of like what the next issue. I don't think there's going to be an 18, right? It I would think... be weird if there was. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we're led to believe that this is the state of comics in that parallel universe mm-hmm. that they're still printed on newsprint, right? Being not very careful with your tape, pulling out solid blood. What's this ad on the back? I won't pull it out. Pull it out. Okay. God, this has never made me more nervous. You're being so fucking weird about the way you're pulling this out. What What is this? Kick Fight. It's a fake book. It's it's also a fake book? I'm assuming. It says Corey Walker. Yes. So Kick I- Fight. Issue 9 coming in March. So this may be another fake tie-in book? Yeah, because Corey Walker also worked on Invincible with... Robert Kirkman. Yep. So they've already had an established team together. So it's either this is either a shout out to them or they're saying, "Hey, kind of be on the lookout for another tie-in." There's there's also this fake ad in the back of this which kind of actually grossed me out where it's Robert Kirkman on a toilet saying, "I can't feel my legs," looking at a Funko Pop doll of himself on like an old school computer. It's saying go to a website kirkmania.com, which is like his fan page or something. Have Has you, anyone gone there? Have you gone there? It redirects to Skybound. Ah, okay. Interesting. Wait, so Kirk Mania, so they didn't, okay. Um, I don't know if this is making fun of, D- Donny Cates has like Advocates. A, Advocates. Yeah. Is his like fan website that he promotes at the end of his thing with like a, you know, pun in his name in the dot com. Mm-hmm. I, I think this was like a. Making fun of that. A, making fun of that. So, uh. There was another dude at the shop that said, oh, you know it's tied into crossover because in the reference to the PR team, it's the same PR team inside the book. But I'm I'm guessing like Image probably uses the same PR for whoever book anyway. It doesn't really. I would assume. I don't yeah. think that that verifies that this is in the crossover universe necessarily. There's no reason you write an alternative universe, comic book universe for Michonne unless you're going to do something with it later. And so this is this is a way to bring Michonne into a uh, crossover as well. There's a, an email here, solidbloodcomics at gmail.com. We should email that. We absolutely should email that. And see if they want to come on the crosstalk and talk about <laughs> solid blood number 17 and where they want to go for number 18. We're going to do that for you, crosstalkers. What are we going to say to them? We're yeah, gonna say, let's, do, let's do it IRL. Yeah. 
I'm pulling up Gmail right right now. Is this coming from my email account? Uh, um, do it from the First Issue Club. Oh, God. Which, if you want to reach out to First Issue Club through email form, firstissueclubpodcast at gmail.com. We'll be there for you. Just like you're here for us. Will I create a crosstalk Gmail? No, I won't. <laughs> I will not commit that hard to a fun bit. All right, what, what is the it's uh, email? It's a solid blood comic at gmail.com. Comic at Gmail? Yeah. Okay, Gmail to Gmail. Perfect. Great. Write them and say, hey, we're currently covering you. No, nope, no. Nope. Subject line, solid blood 18. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and Excelsior. And Excelsior. First Issue Club podcast here. Big fans of solid blood. We have 1 through 16 graded. 9.8. <laughs> Needless to say, issue 17 left our jaws on the floor. We know we are just a humble podcast about comic books and glass paraphernalia. God. <laughs> glass paraphernalia (laughs) but we would love to get the up and coming new writer Robert Kirkman on our show to talk about Solid Blood 18 (laughs) hope to hear from you soon (laughs) first issue club bot Let's leave out the bot. <laughs> how, how are they going to know we're fancy if they don't know we have our own robot? Oh, we've got our own email bot. What about okay to print? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and send. And send. Oh, once we fu- some... fi- spell once, paraphernalia. Yeah, right? once I uh, spell correct paraphernalia, send. All right. And we hope to hear back from that, and then we'll update you in the next crosstalk. That's the first live email we've ever done on a podcast. It was thrilling for me. I hope it was just as good for you. (laughs) I Um, hope it was like sneaking into your parents' medicine cabinet and taking one of their Viagra pills. So so if true, if if what we're speculating is true, that this is in the crossover universe, Mm -hmm. how brilliant and how just perfectly executed this guerrilla marketing that we talked earlier and just what a world that Donny Cates and seemingly every other writer on Image right now yeah. is helping him construct. Right. We've never seen anything like this before. We've seen Amalgam, where they mashed up DC and Marvel characters, but it pales in comparison to what Donny Cates is attempting to do right and now. It, I mean, this is the meta of all meta writing that I've ever seen, like an art piece of just like full-on, like you create, I mean, they created a full-on fucking comic book that just to like place it later into crossover. This is like... Andy Warhol shit. This is like Impractical Jokers. This is just like some shit that is like upper level, like mind Hang on, bending. Wait. Did you just compare Andy Warhol and Impractical Jokers? <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me how those aren't the same. They create things that make the society that it's meant for. Listen, think I mean, I, I like Impractical Jokers as much as the next guy, but <laughs> if Andy Warhol was still alive, R.I.P. You can't tell me that he wouldn't have been intrigued by the concept of of impractical jokers. Sal. <laughs> they're 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 mind pranksters, all right? They are literal pop culture uh, uh, artists. Yeah. Their yeah. canvas is the world at large and our audience hey, is you, us. You sold me. We're talking Andy Kaufman, <laughs> Steve O. <laughs> all of them. Abraham Lincoln. All these names. <laughs> the, sit, the world's first improviser. Sit on an equal tier. Yeah. I I'm I'm so glad to be alive and in the comic books while this is like happening. And then and they don't they're making this for the like hardcore comic book lovers to just like go nuts on and stuff and it is so much fun. Yeah. We we have such a fun time ragging on 
comic books and like just the journey that they've taken to here that to have somebody else make an event purely about the bullshit that comic books went through is it's just a delight and i love that everybody's saying like yes like Rock, robert kurt would come in and ryan Otley were like yeah we'll make a fucking fake comic book <laughs> <laughs> even if it doesn't tie into cross like even if we don't see these characters in crossover just the fact that crossovers universe bled into our universe through this comic mm-hmm. and thusly made our world part of crossover is just fun. It, it like, is, yeah. That that in and of itself has made it an art piece bigger than just a comic, which is great. Chef's kiss, baby. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. And if we do more of these episodes, hopefully Donny Cates himself will come onto the show, talk a little crosstalk Whoa. on crosstalk. Are you starting a campaign for this? Yeah. Yeah, cr- cr- all my cross talkers out there. Hashtag Donnie, come on, and hashtag that- Donnie, come on. <laughs> what a great hashtag! <laughs> hashtag Donnie, come on. You leave he- the apostrophe out of "come on," right? Is it C M O N? Yeah, come on, Donnie, come on, come on. So hashtag D O N N Y C M O N. Yeah. Okay. Donnie, come on. Donnie, come on. And when he sees that, he'll be like, oh, "First issue club is at it again." <laughs> And he'll have no other recourse but to come onto this show. But he's not going to come on if we don't have a great intro song, guys. We need it. We'll even accept MP3, AIFF, or WAV. I'll accept MIDI. (laughs) Anything. (laughs) Chlorians. And that's the episode. Hey. Ended with a solid Star Wars.